Hello friends, well, today's big announcement. No more intros. We're gonna just get right to what we're doing. I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. So the couple steps that I'm going to skip here is I believe that this seam right here is not necessary. So I'm just gonna mark that as not being part of this project. However, this one is necessary and I you know what I, I am thinking if I yeah this one is necessary we're going to keep this one we're going to keep this one keep this one so as you can see there we're going to have like one two three four major pieces another shortcut I think is I thought this was kind of silly from the factory but what they did is they put this kind of crazy little thing around the corner here and I think it looks terrible so we're just going to skip that all together we're just going to do a single wrap around this corner here the first thing that we're, we're going to do is everywhere that the seam intersects like right here we're going to put a mark so I can see that there's one there I can see that there's one right here and I guess that's it isn't it oh wait we got the back here look at that Okay, so there's really an intersection right there. And I guess that's it. This is all just one piece. So now let's go ahead and start taking it apart. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where people make patterns of something. And what they do is they lay it out on a nice flat table. Everything's nice and perfectly clean. They cut out paper patterns. Uh, they put measurements, they mark everything down, and then when they're cutting with their scissors, they're cutting so slow and so deliberate and so accurate. But you know what? This is the real world. The reason you're watching these videos is to help speed up your game to make you more profitable and more efficient. In this way, um, you know, that's, that's really, if you're doing this for a business, you know, and not a hobby, you know, hobby, whatever. You know, you could take it as long as you want, right? But, you know, when you're, th th these um, projects are paying your bills, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to speed things up for you. So, one way to do, take a, a seam apart like this is to take the handy dandy box cutter like this with a roughed up blade. But, you know, if you're going to do that, it takes a while, okay? And that's what we're talking about. We're not going to spend that much time on this here. Because remember, the customer doesn't want to spend that much. So, we can't spend a lot of time on it. Time is money. Okay, so anyway, we can spend all our time trying to get the seam apart here. And we could do it that way. That's one way of doing it, right? Okay, kind of like that, but what we're all about right now, today, in this video, is speeding things up. So really what we're going to do is we're just going to start taking the, taking it apart right here at the seam. Okay, we're going to speed this up for you. So we're just going to keep doing this everywhere there's a seam. We're not doing that one, but we are going to do this one. So I'm going to continue taking this all apart. This is technique number 612. So this technique is not cutting all the patterns completely apart, leaving them partially assembled like this. That way when that way when we go to sew them back together, we know where the pieces go. There's no guessing. So 
So that's a lot faster than pulling individual staples. So what you do is, is what happens sometimes when you pull the vinyl like that, um, some of the staples actually pop out. So that's less staples for you to have to pull by hand. So let's try this one here. You can see it right there. I'm just going to pull on that. That's my technique number uh, 328. It's just pulling on the material. Like that. If all the staples are laying down flat like that, you could just leave them. You know, of course, if they're sticking up, you're going to want to pull them. But that speeds up things quite a bit, huh? And of course, you can always use your staple puller to pull out individual staples. I think you're seeing the difference right now. You're seeing the difference between pulling on the material and pulling out a staple. So, you are going to have the staples that are sticking out. So, of course, you're going to want to pull those just like that. I'm going to go ahead and strip the rest of this down. I'm not going to bore you guys with that because you already know what's going to happen. Okay, I'll strip down. Got everything off of there. Got most of the staples all stripped off that matter. And you can see, I'm not messing around. This is a huge mess, isn't it? Anyway, that's the technique I was telling you about, is leaving these patterns connected some way on the corners, so that way you know exactly how they go back together when it comes time to sew it. Now we could start making our patterns. So, I laid out the original on the new vinyl and what I do is because remember I, I cut the edges here with a scissors instead of taking the seam apart so that means that we have to add back on about a three-eighths of an inch something that kind of looks like that so what I usually do is I'll mark on both ends then what I will do especially if it's a straight edge like that, so I will take my straight edge and you can just go like that. And everything else, just mark it out. Remember, time is money. And I think that's about it. Just got to make this straight edge right here. Okay. So, let's say I have it all marked out. What I do to make sure that, that everything is symmetrical what I will do, this is technique number 483. You might remember this from an earlier video. So what I do is I cut out half. Half of the pattern. Just like that, because the reason why it's half is I'm gonna fold it in half. not that far off I'm pretty close but what we're going to do anyway we're just going to follow the first half just like that now we know that left and right side is going to be the same There we 
go. Fold it in half. Not bad. I can live with that. While it's folded in half, I'm just going to go ahead and mark it half. Just like that. Right. Then on the top side, wherever the mark is, right there, like that, I'll mark the top also. Just like that. Okay, so for this pattern, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be marking that one and this one. So where the staples were, and then also this front corner that I said I was going to do something a little different, is always leave extra where the staples go. Because then whatever we have that's extra, can later be trimmed away. So here we go again. I'm going to do half. So what do you think is half? We gotta check it. Sometimes with upholstery, when you make something, you have to check and recheck. So it looks to me like this here. It's marked center on the original pattern. Mark our centers. For technique number 132, usually what I do is after I make the pattern on the original pattern piece, what I'll do is I'll mark an X. And what that tells me is I've already made the pattern for that piece. Uh, so that way I don't come along somewhere and make a second pattern and waste a lot of material and time or even forget to make a pattern. So I know that I've already made those two pieces so I mark them like that so that way I know it's already been done. I'm going to go ahead and continue making patterns here. Not going to bore you guys with all that stuff, so I'll be back. Something that's really common with jet ski seats is this area right here. What happens is 
the vinyl gets old and it gets dry and brittle and what it'll happen is the seam will split right down in there it'll create a gap so what people they will do almost always as you can see here is they will put duct tape or something to close up that gap so what I do when I'm making the new pattern so this is the pattern here from the previous seat so you can see here where it's perforated on this edge so what I do is when I'm making the new pattern is I'm actually adding material to that because you know chances are this probably shrunk up this direction so right here I will add up to another uh, an inch or maybe even three quarter depending on the seat this one here I'm going to add at least about a quarter of an inch or I'm not I'm sorry not quarter uh, um, about three quarters of an inch on this leading edge right here and I've already done that so you can see on the new pattern when I lay this down right here you can see the extra right in this area right here so that's going to take care of both the shrinkage and any kind of future shrinkage it's just an extra service that I provide for my customers no charge that's what the exploder view looks like got all the patterns cut out so next is to sew everything up So make sure that you use the stainless, right there, stainless staples. Okay, don't go cheap on your customer. They paid a lot of money for this, so give them the right stuff. So now for technique number 211, okay, you see that baby blanket there? Well, a long time ago, many years ago, somebody donated that baby blanket to me. But anyway, the technique is when you're working on something like this, like a motorcycle seat or something similar, what you want to do is you want to put a blanket underneath between the table and the item that you're working on. Because I will guarantee you that these corners right here, if that hits the wood, if there's no protection, you will rub holes through it. Ask me how I know. Okay, so after putting in all the staples, 
the last thing to do now is just to trim it out. So you can see that extra two inches that I added to my pattern. That's really what I'm cutting out now. Just cut it out all the way around, just like that. 